Hello and welcome to episode 54 of the Roll Jump Media Podcast. I'm here on the Saturday morning once again by my co-hosts, Jose and Luis. What's up, guys? How's it going? Hello, everyone. Happy Saturday. Yes, good morning. Thanks, guys. I appreciate that. For today, we're going to keep it pretty simple, like it's been going uh, usually. Uh, We're going to go over our video game draft. Uh, We're going to go ahead and make some decisions today, because I know that we've been procrastinating, so we're going to go ahead and uh, settle that today. Uh, we're also going to go over the what we've been playing and also the nominations for the Video Game Awards Game Awards 2021. See if we have any discourse there. It should be a fun time discussing what was nominated. So let's go ahead and jump right into it, guys. Uh, let me bring up this draft here so the people can see what we're doing. Window capture. Let's change that to. All right, now it's up on the screen. All right, so let's go ahead and do a quick overview of what the standings are right now. Overall, Luis is projected to get 133 points. He has a, a points actual of 117.75. I am projected to get 121 points. I have a uh, points actual of 105.9. And Jose has 73.56 projected. And a uh, points actual is 65.88. Um, Jose has some switching uh, out to do for their games or to replace some games. So he's going to get a little bump there. I also have to switch out one game. Luis is still expecting two games to drop. So he is comfortably in the lead right now. All right. Uh, Ruined Kingdom Legend story needs more reviews before it gets. Okay, okay. I'll just wait for the reviews then. <laughs> okay. I'll calm You're down. About to... <laughs> yeah. You're about, about to rage. To... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, League of Legends is so big, it should have reviews like it already. I guess people weren't as aware of it or didn't care as much. It's weird. All right. So, uh, Jose, let's go ahead and switch out some games that we have. Uh, Luis, are you are you going to want to switch out uh, Hollow Knight? Yeah, I, I probably do. But um, I'll, I'll let you guys go. Because I think you have a... Uh, well, Jose has a couple. So. Okay, that's yeah, interesting. Yeah, I want to switch. You're not going to hold on hope for just a little while longer? Should I? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Merry Christmas surprise. You never know, man. That's true. Uh, let's just go ahead and um, let's look at the games here, and then you'll say, "All right, I'll wait. I can. I'll wait for it." Or if you you think you want to capture one right now, then you can just go mm-hmm. for it. All right. All right. So let's just go ahead and I have a list of games here uh, from Wikipedia. Uh, we are past November 19th. We're on November 20th. So from this game here down, we're going to have uh, our choices. So I can just go ahead and um, list them off here. And if it, anything catches your... your, Well, can you guys can you guys see the screen? Or how, how are we going to do this? <laughs> Let me put on... Um... Love your uh, Twitch. Okay. I can give you guys a link too, and you can do it on your phones if that's easier. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead and do that actually. You want me to drop the link? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Oops, wrong screen. Let me go ahead and drop the link. Uh, I wish it was like Teams. I've been using Teams a lot. And in Teams, as long as you're in a chat with somebody, you can drop the link with them. Mm. Oh, there's a chat. No? Oh, no, there's not. Never mind. Okay. Uh, 
messenger. Uh, our group. Right. Yeah, you just have to scroll down. Okay, got it. All right, so yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Uh, all the games below uh, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. It's basically stuff we get, we have to choose from. Uh, yeah. I guess we can just take a minute to uh, look over it, see which one we'd want to want to bid on, and then we'll just bid together at the all same right. time. Some of these um, picks are going to be bottom of the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't be disrespecting these games, man. You don't know. You don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I might have a slight advantage here because on my computer, I can see like little previews of them. Hmm. So maybe I'll use my phone here. Actually, I already have one that I have in mind. I'm just gonna I'm, I'm gonna put faith in it. So, have, so there are some games that have already released previously. Yeah. Or, so, like for example, Dead Store. Yeah, Dead that Store had really that that yeah that was released already. I'm sure. Yeah. So we wouldn't be able to. We wouldn't no, be able to attempt that one. No, sir. Alright. Yeah, I already got mine in, in in my head. You guys are probably not gonna pick it, so I have like how many do I need to replace? I need to replace Oh that's true, we didn't say, huh? Um yeah, so you got Solar Ash is coming out in the beginning of December. Yeah, you have two. All right. This is hard now, dude. I thought this game released already. Huh? Oh boy. Do I go for the win or do I go for the hope? <laughs> you know, I think I'm going to hold out. Well, you hold out? Mm-hmm. So I'm not gonna do any changes. All right. Damn it. <laughs> Dude, I could like lose it all like this next month. <laughs> like lose the lead. We don't we don't make a new podcast until the 20, 2022. <laughs> all right. Yo, dude. Any choices on your end yet, uh, Jose? Don't share them. Just I'm just seeing if you had mm, anything in mind. Yeah, um, I have a few. Um, Are you ready to bid for one? Yes, I think. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and do the first uh, bid together. All right. All right, so making a bid. 
Oh, but we have to drop the others first, no? Oh, right. We got to drop ours. You're, you're right. You're right. So we're going to drop uh, Final Fantasy 16. <laughs> Wait, which one is it? Uh, yeah. I got to drop Final Fantasy 15. I mean, 16. That's, that's painful, dude. That's not right. Rip. Final Fantasy 16. Drop. I don't know why I'm complaining. That Endwalker is gonna be a banger. Okay, now I'm gonna make my bid. Yo, if this slips, bro, I'm gonna be mad. That's the thing. Like some of these games have been dropping. <laughs> <laughs> like flies. All right, I made my bid. Oh, I, I should have made it before. Don't look. I'm. I sh we should have done at the same time. Sorry. Make your bid. Don't look at what? Don't, just make your bid. <laughs> Wait, I need to drop my game. Damn it! I was too hasty. Why is there like a timer or what? I don't know if it shows up on whatever. Oh well, I mean, I'm not. I'm not picking. I don't. Okay, we should be fine. Uh, so I have two games to replace. Do I just drop the two games already? Um, yeah, yeah. If you're gonna replace them, drop them. I can't believe House of the Voice of Cards game got a seventy four. I thought for I, I had confidence it was gonna be higher. Okay, make a bid. Uh, I don't know, dude. This is all. Do it. Do it. Um. Okay. I get it. Okay. Uh, let's do a reveal. Do you want to go first? Has it, uh, uh, so I bid for, um, mm -hmm. what was it called? The gunk? Or gunk? Okay, how much did you bid? Because I also bid for that. Ah, oh, shit. Uh, I mean, shoot. <laughs> um, <laughs> I bid 15. I bid 15? $15. 15? I bid, I bid at 10, so that's yours. Oh, shoot. Nice. Okay, okay. so that means I have to bid for my... I'm going to bid for the hope then. What's the hope? Uh, I don't see no hope in those two games. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, dude, that was a that was a good play. You know, I only had thirteen bucks. Probably like I'm gonna go ahead and just. Oh really? I, yeah. I don't know. I didn't that know. was a good play, even if you didn't realize it. Okay, so uh, I'll bid again in this second round. See if we get the same game again. Uh, okay, now there's more options. I don't know. Okay. Uh. Okay, let me know when you're ready. I'm ready.
This is too hard. I don't know if I should go <laughs> for something like safe, I guess. Okay, I'm ready. Whatever. Okay, ready? One. I'm I'm gonna risk it all. <laughs> oh, let me let me let me okay. Make a bid. Alright. One, two, three, place bid. Alright, so I'll reveal mine this time. Uh, I bid for a game that I played a little bit of. It's on the Switch. It usually comes up when there's a sale. Siberia. Oh. Nice. I think uh, that has a potential to do well. I don't know much about it, but I'm hoping it gets in at least an 80. <laughs> okay. What so, you bid for? I, I didn't bid for that. Um, I bid for <laughs> I bid for Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> Oh, that's a good um, one. That's a that's a that's a using your head play right there. Or for one dollar. <laughs> nice. I also bid one dollar for mine. Oh. Nice. So uh, we'll see. We'll see how it does. Sure, sure. I didn't know they were coming. I watched a little bit of this uh, record of Lotus War. Mm-hmm. That could be pretty good. I might check it out, just see how it looks. I was okay. also I was also thinking of um, Siberia. Oh really? But but I was like, I don't know, let's just keep it safe. I don't know. Yeah. But for all I know, they might just destroy Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see, we'll see. We'll see. Alright, so Luis, uh, Jose is going to have the gunk and Five Nights at Freddy's on his team. That means that his full team mm -hmm. is going to be the only, the ones that you can counterpick now are going to be Solar Ash, Five Nights at Freddy's, and um, blah, 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 the gunk. Okay. I'm going to kind of pick uh, Five Nights. Okay. Uh, I don't think it's reflected on his team yet, but we will set your counter pick okay. to Five Nights instead of Gotham Knights. All right. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. All right, let's go ahead and switch back over to our regular programming here. Programming. Oh, my face is getting broadcasted, so that's programming kind of, right? I don't know. <laughs> okay, so finally we got that resolved. We got games drafted. Uh, the only thing that we're waiting on is uh, Luigi. Luigi's holding out hope. Luigi's is holding out hope for <laughs> Hollow Knight. <laughs> I yeah. don't blame him. I do not blame you, sir. Let's go ahead and move on to the next part of the podcast. What we've been playing. Same order. Let's keep it simple. Go ahead. All right. So, um, um, the AOL, AOL dial up. Like, what have I been playing? Oh, sorry. Um, uh, I've been playing. Well, this this past week, uh, I was I was out uh, sick a few days, so I was able to to get my hands on some games. Heck yeah! And yeah, and, uh, it's something that I, you know, <laughs> that I l last time we 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 spoke, um, I said that I hadn't really played anything. And this time around, though, um, on my 2DS, I started playing a, a game that I had bought. Uh, I think it was, it was for sale. Uh, it was like 10 bucks. Uh, Sushi Striker. The, mm. uh, I don't even remember the, the, 
subtitle. But uh, Sushi Striker, uh, it's a game that came out like a while back. And it didn't really do much. Um, but I started playing that. I think it's it's a strategy game. It's one of those like games that you just you know, there's levels and you 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 connect sushi and you do combos and things like that. So, um, it's a pretty simple game. Um, so I've been playing that on yeah, my 2DS on my Switch. I've been playing. I'm still playing uh, Monster Hunter Stories 2. Uh, I want to get. Uh, I want to finish that game um soon so i can like move on then, <laughs> yeah because like uh, um I, I don't like moving on from games that i haven't finished <laughs> sure so, it's a thing but uh, i've been having fun with that game um i'm advancing the story so you know it's, it's getting interesting um but but yeah i mean and i, I think I'm, I'm i might be halfway there so hopefully soon um and then I think like the main game that I've been playing, um, it's been on the PS5, uh, Miles Morales. I'm still playing that game. Uh, and I think like I'm, I'm really having fun with that game. Um, like every time like I'm not playing or I want to play something, that's the first game that I think about that I want to play. Sometimes I can't because, um, you know, it, the PS5 is inaccessible. But, um, but yeah, every time I play the game, uh, you know, I, I, I become hooked and, it's really interesting, and I think like I'm at a, at a point in the story where where it, it does become interesting. It is interesting, and, and I think that's it's, it's like forty percent into the story or something like that. So, so I've been playing that, um, but uh, I think that's pretty much it. Those are all the games that I've been playing. I haven't played Apex in forever, which is kind of sad. <laughs> um. But yeah, I was yeah. I was I was kind of expecting you to bring up Metroid. I thought you were gonna play that. Like, you know what? This is no. a perfect time for me to <laughs> knock that out, dude. And I thought about it. I was like, you know what? Should I just start Metroid and just play it? But I know I, I was like, I can't. It's gonna bother me that I haven't that I didn't finish the the other game, Monster Hunter. Got it. How how many so hours have you put into Monster Hunter? Monster Hunter. Um, Monster Hunter Stories. Yeah. Ooh. I think. Ballpark. Dang it. Um, maybe probably like around eleven, between eleven to fifteen, maybe. Oh really? If I feel like you've like put like, at least thirty in it. How many times you brought it up? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, yeah. I stopped playing in it for a while, and then like. I'm really coming back to it, but it might be the high. Honestly, I, I, I don't remember mm. that well. Sure. Monster Hunter Rise has just been a little itch in the back of, of my in my brain. Mm-hmm. It's like, hit up Luigi. Let's do a couple of hunts. Oh um, man, that, like the, that extra content that we haven't played. Yeah. Longsword and the insect glaive with the the freaking hero dive down on the insect glaive. I, I kind of miss that. Mm-hmm. Oh man, cool. Um, for Miles Morales, are you uh, collecting as much as you can before moving on with the mm-hmm. story beat, or are you just going uh, marker by marker? Um, I like doing uh, like the side side quests or like uh, side missions. Um, so I am taking my time, you know, um, exploring the world and and doing the, the little missions that you can do, like to save people and things like that. Um, but I, I make sure that like I progress in the story, that like, whenever I'm playing, uh, just so I can keep it moving. Um, but but yeah, I I am taking my time with Miles Morales. Cool. And I don't know, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. I really like uh, what they did. Yeah, I have fond memories of going through through the story. Um, just it's it's a fun it's a fun superhero will told story. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So. Cool. Jose, it seems like it's your turn, sir. 
So, um, it's it's I've <laughs> it's been slow for me. Um, I haven't really uh, hadn't really been playing um, anything at all. I think the last time we got together in our previous podcast, I had mentioned that um, I really literally did not touch the switch or any gaming device um, in forever. But uh, yesterday, I, I finally broke that. Um, I uh, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl came out uh, yesterday. And so um, I got the double pack. And I started playing um, Brilliant Diamond on my newly purchased uh, Switch Lite, um, the, the Pokemon edition. And uh, yeah, I've been, I, I got to play that for a few hours. Um, and um, obviously, I, those of you who know me know that I love Pokemon. So um, I'm enjoying that a lot. Um, it's, it's been fun going back to, you know, Sinnoh and, and playing that, that game um, and kind of figuring out what my team is going to consist of. So trying to form that and... And yeah, it's it's fun. Um, <clears throat> I'm very early in the game, so I haven't really seen a lot of the a lot of the game, um, um, how it was remade, and and all the new details and and features that they've added. But um, I'm looking forward to that. But uh, yeah, I'm, I've been playing that, and hopefully, once I do that, now that I have a Switch Lite, um, maybe I'll be able to play more games. Um, without having to like take turns with Luis, because that was a pretty big issue. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I'll hopefully, I'm thinking of playing Hades after Pokemon. So we'll see, and then from there on, um, you know, any other game that Luis has, there's there's a bunch of games to play. So looking forward to it. Nice man. Um, did you when you originally played? Uh, Diamond or Pearl? Uh, did you play Diamond or Pearl? Or did you play both in the, on the original version? So, the okay. So this is what's special about Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. Um, so my first game was Ruby and Sapphire, like my first generation, I guess. But Diamond and Pearl was the first. Like it was the first game where I was like, fully immersed in Pokemon so like I went in as a <laughs> like, full-blown like fan of Pokemon so like I already knew okay I'm I want this game with Ruby and Sapphire that was a gift so I wasn't really expecting it I wasn't really looking out for it um, if that makes sense I was yeah. more of like oh the the anime and that's cool um, I really was kind of um, unaware of like the, the video games um, I mean I knew they were there but I was you know, I never got to play them. So, um, so I did. I purchased the um, Pokemon Diamond for the Nintendo DS, and I purchased the Onyx colored uh, Nintendo DS uh, light um, with my own money. Like I <laughs> saved up and purchased that, and I think this helped me out with with those savings. So technically it's it's lisa's purchase as well <laughs> but shout out <laughs> nice yeah shout out uh, shout out to Luis. um but yeah so so that was like my like I, I still remember that day when i had it it was and i, and I love the nintendo ds onyx like the glossiness of it and the brand newness of it and diamond to me back then back then pokemon diamond you know had shifted from um into like more 3d ish I guess, uh, um, graphics and like all the details, the touch screen, like it was, it was like this new thing, you know, and right. the, the hype was real. So, um, so, so going into this, um, I did purchase the, the double pack, but I, I, I picked, um, brilliant diamond. Cause that was my game. That was the game that I played and I did purchase the, the Nintendo switch Lite the 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 special edition because it's based on the onyx uh well it's based on the the nintendo ds version um the special edition which i never got but it has the like the onyx um hue 
the onyx colored theme so so yeah just wanted to recreate my childhood and <laughs> go with that honor honor my childhood that's awesome man that is really cool yeah so it holds a special place in my heart <laughs> uh, the diamond pokemon diamond <clears throat> Yeah, it doesn't get much better than that with gaming when you have an attachment like that and you and then it just pops up again and just yeah. The, yeah. The synapses in your brain just firing at full <laughs> speed. Yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah. Uh anything anything else? Just checking. Nope. <laughs> that's actually just that's been it for now. For now. But sure. We'll see. Whenever you get to Hades, I'm looking forward to seeing how you how you feel about that because yeah, that, it's that's going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, so I'll go ahead and cap it off. Um, before I go into the games, I made a purchase for so the next gen or current gen consoles now. They uh, output in 4K, 60 frames per second. Maybe they'll even get higher. We're not sure yet. But um, I, my TV currently, or was from 2014, uh, it was a birthday present. 1080, uh, 1080p TV. I'm not sure what the frames and everything were. I wasn't really, didn't really care back then. But now with the next gen consoles, I'm more cognizant of it. I wanted to tap into that, that fidelity and that smoothness. So, did a little bit of research, um, settled on a TV, a LG C1, uh, has all the HDMI 2.1 port ports to support the, the frames per second, uh, the frame per second, like 120, I believe, the 4K, all that good stuff. Um, OLED, so supposedly has like millions of, of like, what, what do they call it, lights or nodes to light up your tv making like a sharper color uh blacker blacks all that good stuff so i'm like pull the trigger on that uh well it wasn't uh cheap but <laughs> but uh, i was able to save a little bit on it and do i like the tv i love the, this tv man it's uh it's been great um the first time i experienced it i was just watching um 4k video and I, I had a ps3 on me i didn't have my ps5 but uh even playing the ps3 games i could tell that uh the image was sharper the game felt smoother to me uh, immediately so i was anticipating trying out the ps5 so this past week i had my ps5 with me to try it out on the tv and uh man i, I boosted up final fantasy 14 up, up to some resolutions uh not to 4k because uh if you boost it up to 4k it looks like it does 30 frames which i'm not down with but mm -hmm. um i think it's like 1440 something like that or whatever that next bump is and my goodness man like <laughs> <laughs> like uh the clarity the the, I guess the increase in size from my previous TV as well. My previous one was 55. I went with 65 on this one. I was going back and forth. 55, 65, save the money or not. But went for the yeah. bigger TV, more immersive experience. Uh, better clarity, the same, uh, same or even better smoothness since the TV is kind of like architected to take advantage of those like those minute details. And as a gamer, you, you would feel it going from... Uh, a TV that was out a few years ago to something that's out right now. So, yeah. Um, it's kind of like Final Fantasy 14.5 right now, just like the, the, the visual and smoothness difference it makes. And um, I also tried out Apex on it. Apex, same thing, kind of like Apex 1.5. It feels... It's just clearer. It feels, it feels better. Even the audio, man. The audio, if you just use the speaker audio, like... I usually go like headphones all the time, but the audio from the TV was actually really good as well. It was, it was an experience for sure, and I'm gonna be keeping it for um, to be playing my future games on. Um, so yeah, so I went over what I was playing: uh, Apex, um, Final Fantasy 14, 
Uh, just I also been playing Kingdoms of Amalur uh, Reckoning, which is a PS Plus game right now, and playing it on that TV, man. It just and with and with the remaster uh, upgrades, yeah, it's been it's been a great experience. I've been having a lot of fun. You're making me want a, another TV, right? <laughs> <laughs> man, if if you can swing it, dude, I I think it's worth it. Whenever you get you get a chance to swing it, um, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, I went that route. Uh, I also had somebody. I had somebody I was talking to that you could also go if you don't want like a big fancy TV. You can just get a regular ish TV, spend less money, and then um, the money that you save from making that purchase, you can put towards like a monitor that's that has pretty much all those same functions for for less mm -hmm. money. But but if you want that size and you want that like home entertainment experience, then I think the TV's the way to go. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's all I have to say <laughs> about it. Um, mm -hmm. That's pretty much what I've been doing. It's been fun. Uh, are you guys ready to jump into those uh, Game of the Year nominations? Let's go. Let's do it. Let's go. I have some things to say. Ah, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I have some choice words for Mr. Keeley. All right, so just going to make sure. Where's my mouse? We had the same issue last time where the mouse just wasn't popping up here. The dang mouse. Yeah, the, the pointer. Where's my pointer, dude? OK. Okay, I see it. Let's go to the top here. Click on it, going all the way. Okay, I can see the highlights. That's good. All right. Oh, no. Oh, this sucks, dude. <laughs> the pointer is so important. The pointer is just so important. I, oh. It just disappeared on me. Oh, okay. You all categories. I gotta check that it's showing on the screen. It is showing on the screen. Cool. Okay, so we got categories here. We've got... Um, you guys want to say Game of the Year for later, or you want to do it right now? We can leave that for later. Leave it a little bit later? All right. Uh, let's see. They, we got some esports ones. We're good on that, I would expect. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and go into most anticipated game. Most anticipated game. All right. So for most anticipated game, there are five games here. We have Elden Ring, God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden, Ru Forbidden West, the sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Starfield. So out of those, personally, before we talk about the choices, what is your most anticipated game from that list? Okay, for me, I think obviously it's it has to be uh, Breath of the Wild 2. Sure, sure. And I want more Zelda in my life. Um, but so there is a but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, and I think I'm I'm really looking forward to uh, Starfield too, as well. Interesting. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanna I wanna see more of that. Like I wanna see what what they do. Um, yeah. with like the the um what's it called like the power of of the Xbox. Um, so like I don't know it, it's it's I think it's like an interesting it's an interesting game we haven't really seen much of it uh, and I, I really want to see more of it so I know it, it's kind of surprising but yeah Jose what are you, what's your what's your pick here well for me um, it's I I mean 
Breath of the Wild 2, I think. Um, mm -hmm. I personally am the most hyped for. Um, and honestly, I don't know. I think the hype or like the anticipation that that game has created, um, I don't know. I think like they got this in the bag, honestly. Um, but but we shall see. But I personally, and that would be my pick, um, Breath of the Wild 2, uh, just because, I don't know, people have been asking for it. So, mm -hmm. I would I would pick that. Cool, cool. Uh, for me, uh, I'm going to go ahead and give it to Horizon Forbidden West. Uh, that... That showcase that they had I th in the middle of the year, a little bit before, was actually really amazing. Uh, it looks stunning. They, it looks like they, uh, they're making the melee combat more fleshed out. Uh, the underwater diving and then just like all the, all the details underwater and the dialogue looks solid. I think that Horizon Forbidden West is going to be... Uh, just an amazing action adventure game. Hopefully, it reaches those heights of what I felt when I was playing back in the PS3 area era with like Uncharted 2. Maybe it'll come close to that kind of feeling. I hope it does. Like that magic gets recaptured here on the PS5. But um, I have high hopes and high expectations for this game, and I think it'll deliver. Yeah, dude. I remember seeing that, like that that showcase they did. And like yeah, it's it's so it was so pretty, um, like how it looked. Yeah. And and then like I think like the transitions between like gameplay and and cutscene like oh yeah and tell. Mm -hmm. So like I don't know I, that I think that that's amazing. Like it it, it, it always amazes me. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, that's another one actually. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I haven't really I haven't played the first one. Me either. Uh, so I, like I wouldn't like. Maybe I'm not looking too much into it, um, but yeah, definitely, like, it's a big, big game. Yeah. Um, since since you, we, we've been talking about Zelda, uh, I'm open to seeing what the sequel brings. It's just going to have to, it's not just going to be just because it's a Zelda, I'm picking it up. I have to get, personally, I have to be see a little bit more that it's just beyond what the original offered, right. just as a different, like, perspective. <laughs> I think a lot of people are just we're just gonna be saying straight up Grout of War Ragnarok if they're not into Zelda. I think that's what it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Elden Ring, I mean I'm looking forward to that too. <laughs> yeah. Um, how about yourself? What about uh from what you've seen? Uh, Elden Ring? Yeah. Elden Ring, um, like, even when they announced it, um, I, I thought it was, like, a really, it's an interesting game. And, and I've been wanting to, to get into, like, the From Software games. Mm -hmm. And I have uh, Bloodborne, for example, on my, uh, for, from the PS Plus. I got it from PS Plus, and it's something that I want to try, I want to play. Um, but, yeah, I, I think, uh, the like the environment and, and the type of game that Elden Ring is it, it's something more of my um, liking compared to like let's say like a Bloodborne or sure uh, uh, maybe Sekiro uh, even though I kind of want to try those games as well right Sekiro's and, badass uh, mm -hmm. uh, so so I think yeah I think there's a lot of hype for the game as well uh, rightly so um, and I don't know I think it looks, it looks cool Nice, dude. Nice, nice. Okay. Crossing my fingers, Breath of the Wild. I mean, the sequel to Breath of the Wild just makes everyone, everybody in our in our group happy. I think that would be a huge win. Yes, that would be ideal. Yes, sir. Okay. Man, there has to be a better way to just... I think what I'm going to do is... I'm going to have the categories in a different pop-up so I can just easily Assist them. Move, move back and forth here, yeah. That's so weird how this, the mouse just goes away.
Oh no. Nah, it's okay. I'm still able to navigate. Okay. Well, let me check if there's any comments. Okay, we're good. All right, so next thing we have here, let's see. The best debut indie. You want to take a look at that, see if we see any of those. All right. Okay. Okay, best debut indie. We have the art, art, the artful escape. The forgot the. Let me start again. The Artful Escape, <laughs> The Forgotten City, uh, Kena, Bridge of Spirits, Sable, and Valheim. Okay, so I haven't played any of these games. Me neither. <laughs> well, I've actually, I have. Little, but... Sorry. I've seen a little bit of, of Kena. I've seen a little bit of The Artful Escape. Um, but, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. Do you have a... Any thoughts on any of those? Uh, not really, dude. I know that um, Valheim blew up at the beginning beginning of this year and that people really, really mm -hmm. loved it. Uh, one of those survival games, I think it has a little bit of something different going on there, but I'm good. And Sable, I played a little bit of, uh, of Sable. I was able to. Um, I didn't buy it, but I, I had an opportunity to play it for a little bit. And I think the art style is pretty pretty great um didn't really have i don't i i wasn't able to play enough to form like a really a good opinion but it seems like a a solid like third person adventure-ish i don't know if there's action in it but it seems aesthetically pleasing at least and i want to play kina dude yep that's yeah. pretty much that's pretty much what it comes down to with kina. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um same uh, uh... Kina, I, I, I want to play the game. And, you know, I'm thinking of getting it at some point in the future. Um, so, yeah, and I mean, Kina is it's, it's probably out of all these games, the one that I was like waiting for the most. So, like, I'll go with uh, Kina. Uh, although I, I've heard like really good things about the Alpha Escape. Um, mm. Apparently, like, it's, it's like the soundtrack is really good and, and the gameplay, it's interesting. So, that that might be a, a big contender as well. Cool. Yeah, I think I think Kana has this in the bag. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts Same. on your side, Jose? Oh, was that Jose speaking? No, that was me. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh sorry. It's it's because um I was having issues like pulling up the the nominees, but um. Oh sure. Um, yeah, I mean. Like you guys said, I, I haven't really played any of these games. Um, but I do think that from what I've, you know, uh, witnessed or, or seen, um, I do think uh, Kina, Bridge of Spirits, um, really did get a lot of praise. Um, and I don't know. I, I feel like I see I see it potentially becoming like a, like a franchise, like a... a you know, a well-established uh, gaming, you know, uh, franchise. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm rooting for uh, Kina, Bridge of Spirits. Um, I haven't forgotten the Legend of Zelda influence that some critics were pointing out. So, oh yeah, <laughs> that one review. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm biased, <laughs> but yeah, I'm rooting for Kina. Cool, cool. All right, let's go ahead and see the rest of these categories here. Uh, content creator, content creator of the year. I mean, we can skip that one. Us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. Roll, roll jump media. She. Heck yeah. Inconsistency. Never heard of it. Best multiplayer. Mm, I mean, we could take a look. Just a quick glance. For best multiplayer, we have Back for Blood, Knockout City, It Takes Two, Monster Hunter Rise, New World, and Valheim. Um, I think it's really impressive the <laughs> how smooth Monster Hunter Rise's uh, multiplayer runs. Right. Yeah, that's that was like a big thing, right? Um. That a lot of people pointed out because before then, like trying to play with with friends, 
Like you, you had to do like a bunch of things. Oh yeah, um, <laughs> generations. Yeah, when yeah with generations. Uh, so yeah, I think it, that that's pretty cool. And and then like when you're playing with with friends, it's you know you would expect it to be maybe like a little laggy. But yeah. It's actually pretty smooth. Um. That'd be that'd be I think that'd be my pick actually. Um, I, I mean, I think that it takes two. Um, would be a good. Uh, it's a good contender. Yeah. For um for this, uh, because, I mean, I feel like multiplayer is. Like it was specifically made, to be multiplayer. Like I I I, I mean I've never I haven't played the game but, um, I mean it's in the title you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so and I mean it did get a lot of praise so I don't know I think that that might take the win um, but again I've never I haven't played any of the other games so I'm not really familiar with you know how uh, how good or bad the multiplayer experience is um, for each one of these um, but just you know based off of I don't know, like it's really interesting that it takes two kind of brought forth um like the i'm assuming it's local local multiplayer for it takes two uh, um, it might be online dude I, i'm pretty sure it has online, online multiplayer okay. okay but i know that that was one of the things that kind of stood out to me when it was first revealed um it's just that it's like that that was i think the focus of it and i don't know a lot of games right now are being released and it's like single player and um, single player campaigns and that 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 single player experience and this game kind of coming out and, and being like oh it takes two <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it, it's really special and I don't know I think I, I my pick would go to it takes two yeah I'd be so I'd be down for that for sure mm-hmm Let's see what other categories we have here. Um, okay, no categories. All right, we have best sports racing. I think that's a skip. Sim strategy, we can skip that. Best fighting. Ooh, we can skip that one. How about Brett? Best role playing. Yeah, let's talk about this one. <laughs> Okay. Best role playing. We have <laughs> Cyberpunk 2077, Monster Hunter Rise, Scarlet Nexus, Shin Megami Tensei 5, and Tales of Arise. All right. So people have been talking about this category. <laughs> mm -hmm. A lot. Yep. Yeah. I, All right. I'm, I'm really happy to see Scarlet Nexus here. Mm hmm. Uh, I think this looks like a really tough category. Like, there's a lot of really strong contenders. Like Cyberpunk. <laughs> That's right. Dude, is Cyberpunk runs with this category? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I feel. Um, I mean... From what I've heard um, from people who've actually played the game, um, they said that it's it's a good it's a good game. You know, it's it has there's there's something. Um, how do how do I explain it? Like it, it has something going on, right? Like the story and and, um, and, and, and like in that aspect, it's it's really good. But uh, I feel like we can't overlook <laughs> the the issues and that that. That this game had like in in last generation uh, consoles and in some new generation consoles, right? Because mm -hmm. um, I mean that game was announced for those consoles as well, right? And and so yeah, we, I don't think we can overlook the bugs. We can overlook um, those issues. Uh, some might even say those lies. <laughs> from oh dang! Function. All right, uh, but you know. Uh, I do think that there might be other games in this category that uh, are, are all 
also deserving or are more deserving of, of the award. Um, uh, I think specifically from what I've heard, because again, I, I haven't played it, it's Shin Megami Tensei Five. Yeah. Um, I've heard that's like a, a really strong, uh, like a strong contender, uh, a strong RPG. Um, you know, and again, from what I've seen, right, of people on Twitter who have actually had the opportunity to play it, it apparently it's, like, it's really fun. And it's a really fun RPG. Um, but yeah, I think I think this category is going to Shin Megami Tensei. Um, Monster Hunter Rise. Uh, I don't. Do you consider it uh, a role playing? That's what I was thinking, man. Like, I in a sense it is because you have to make choices as to like how you want to customize your weapon and what kind of gear you want to take. But as for your character itself, it's kind of you don't customize. Well, you customize like the appearance, but it's not. It's not your typical RPG where you know you you, you uh, manipulate the stats or whatever. It's more of an outside outside factors affecting your character. So not really, but yeah, I can see there are. I would say it's RPG, but not in a traditional traditional sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and I've heard like a, a few snaps as well. Um, I. I, I... I think I saw like a, a few people saying that you know the the world ends with you, Neo. Oh. Or Neo, mm-hmm. the world ends with you. Was kind of snub. And I remember when that game came out, like a lot of people were like praising it. And, sure. Uh, and you know, it was like the goatee for for a lot of people at that time. Um, obviously, you know, there's been a lot of games coming out, so. So I and, and I haven't really played it, so I really can't say like, oh yeah, it was snub. So, but yeah, shout out I guess to to the world ends. Too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, for, for me, I think Shin Megami Tensei has this. I also agree. I, I will tell you the same. Um, I think, well, Tales of Arise, uh, since nobody has talked about it, uh, I feel like, I well, I think we were we talked about it in the last podcast. I, like, I feel like it just came and went. Um, it didn't really make any noise. <laughs> um, and... <laughs> I mean, our friend, um, who, like, he's a huge Tales of fan, I think even he said that it's, like, it, like, he, he, what, he's, like, more, more than halfway through the game, and he still has no idea what's going on, or, um, so, so, yeah, I mean, it's probably, probably, I mean, I would say it's probably the weakest of the five, um, in terms of, uh, story, or, um, but, but yeah, I mean, I, I I would give it to Shin Megami Tensei. Um, Cyberpunk, I, I feel like, I feel like that's a slap in the face, too. I mean. <laughs> um, they could have left it out, like, legit. I mean, yeah, because, I mean, come on, you can't ignore, like, all the bad rep it had, you know? Like, how are you going to put it in a main category like that and, yeah. and have, but, I mean, uh, it is what it is. Um, but, yeah, uh, my pick would go to Shin Megami Tensei 5 as well. Yeah. If Scarlet Nexus, if there was a uh, if there was a ca- category for best video game anime, Scarlet Nexus would take that. Maybe next year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just putting on. on you, be... Huh? I was sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say I'm putting you on notice, Chad. If you want to play anime in video game form this year, Scarlet Nexus, that's that's where you want to look. <laughs> We better see um, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 here next year. Xenoblade All right, Chronicles let's go to the next category. <laughs> Dude, I'm looking forward yeah. to that. Whenever it comes out. Our three houses, too. <laughs> Yo, I'm pretty sure the next Direct, whenever it happens, it sh- I think it's going to pop up there. Was Fire Emblem Three Houses uh, nominated the year it came out? Yes, yeah, I believe so. I don't know. I think, I think it won. It won a category. I thought twenty nineteen. It won maybe? the the best game uh, according to fans. I think. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's nice to... I don't know if it won like best yeah. RPG or strategy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's keep keep it moving here.
Man, I really wish it just took you back to the category pages. <laughs> okay. Uh, role playing action adventure. We gotta take a look at these. Let's go ahead and try to do a little bit quicker so we can talk about the game of the year. Best action adventure. We have Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, Metroid Dread, Psychonauts 2, Ratchet and Clank, Rift, Rift Apart, and Resident Evil Village. This one's tough. Yeah. Huh. I would give it to either Psychonauts 2 or Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Really? Yeah. More, I'm leaning more towards um, Ratchet and Clank. Just because I feel like Ratchet and Clank was... I feel like it was universally praised. <laughs> I don't know if that's that's reaching, but I mean, a lot of people loved it when it came out. So, yeah. What do you all think? The thing is, uh, like the only game I played here is uh, Village. <laughs> uh, <laughs> soon, Metroid Dread, hopefully soon. Mm -hmm. Um. And but man, like like all these games, even Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, like recently, a lot of people have said it's like it's really good as well. I know. Um, but like when all this each game came out, like they got they received a lot of praise. Um, and Ratchet and Clank with the part, um, like I remember, like people were even before he came out, you know, like the trailers and stuff, like they're already talking about it. Uh, Psychonauts 2, I think. Uh, like, I think if we look at the at the um, the draft, I think Psychonauts 2 is like the highest rated game, or one of the highest rated games. But is it because like of its game. action? That's and that's true. Um, and actually, not that you mentioned that. Um, when when they uh, when they um, revealed the the. The, um, what's it called? The the games for this uh, section? Yeah, I, that's what I thought for like when I saw uh, Psychonauts 2 um, and maybe even Ratchet and Clank. Um, would those be considered action adventure? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah. I mean, based on the on the description, right? It's like combat with puzzle, and uh, I mean, I guess they do. They they do fit. Yeah. Um, who would you pick, Ray? Yeah, like honestly, I don't, I don't, I'm lost here. Oh man, I feel like Resident Evil Village is a good, is a easy elimination. Even right. though I haven't played it, just off of what I've heard and what people, the discourse. Yeah. I agree. Um, you know what, dude? It's just like Ratchet and Clank is hard because, like, it looks pretty, and they just like like amped it up amped up what previous things have the, the what the previous games have done but i don't think there was there was like a big big takeaway as to oh yeah you have to play ratchet and clank rift apart because you can only do this in this ratchet game so i'm kind of leaning towards not giving it to that even though it's stellar it's kind of it's it's a victim of its own success like the franchise's own success previously mm -hmm. and so I would be it would be between Metroid Dread and Psychonauts 2 for me. And I would say that I'm leaning towards Metroid Dread just a tiny bit because I feel like the refinement in action was really good. And I feel like that moment to moment gameplay, like the fluidity between it, between just like wrecking the regular enemies into fighting an enemy Emmy and all that, like I feel like they nailed that. And also the adventure, uh, it's kind of like up to you how much adventure you want to take in. It's not like a, it's not a, a, a track that you just like watch or experience. So I would give it to Metroid Dread, but I would, I would think Psychonauts 2 would be a, a close second there. Yeah, I, I think... Like if I if I had to pick, I, I'll give it to Dread as well. And and because like right now when you ask like, it's a good action or like based on the action, I think out of all these games, 
Uh, I remember hearing a lot from a lot of praise for what they did with Mentor Drake in terms of like action. Um, mm -hmm. So based on that, uh, I think I'll give it to him. And again, I haven't played this game, so um, I can just only I can only go off on, on thoughts from others. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Um, maybe on the adventure side, Psychonauts 2 has a little bit more, but I feel like Metro Dread does a better job offering best to both worlds there. Mm -hmm. So as I said, Ratchet and Clank, and you and I agree that Metro Dread would be the win. All right. Uh, poor Mar Marvel Guardians of the Galaxy. I feel like people were, were crapping on it for so long that people just don't believe it's yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, I'm still in denial. I'm like, are you sure it's good? <laughs> right? The, the yeah. Too, like, I remember, like, seeing a lot of, like, reviews on Twitter and stuff. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Is this real? Yeah. Oh, man. That's such, that's, that's such a bummer for that game. Mm-hmm. I think it's on sale. I think it's one of those deals. I think it's like 30 bucks on Dude, Amazon. That's... Best Buy. <laughs> okay, action game. We'll do action game and then we'll do game of the year since we're running out of time here. Alright, best action game. We have Back for Blood, Chivalry 2, Death Loop, Far Cry 6, and Returnal. I have not played any of these games. Neither have I. Um, neither have I. But looking at these five, um, I'm leaning more towards either Death Loop or Eternal mm -hmm. um, as the strong, strong contenders um, in this category. Um, yeah. I mean, Death Loop. All my homies, all my homies hate Deathloop. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. It's it's between those two. I I really, I mean, again, I've never played. I haven't played any of these five um, nominees. Yeah. Um, so just just based off of like reception and and reviews, um, I would give it to those. Either of those two. Yeah. I think Deathloop has this in the bag. I, I would think Deathloop does too. Mm -hmm. After there, there are seven trailers. I mean, yeah. how could you not? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's it's our King Studios. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I I feel like I feel like there's no competition. Maybe Returnal, but I think <clears throat> that loop is too strong. Yeah, yeah. I think Death Loop like. The pedigree that Arc Arcane has with just how they use powers and their and their mechanics is, I don't think Returnal Returnal gets close to it, but I don't think it's going to over overpower that that pedigree. Mm -hmm. uh, da, da, da. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at the remainder of the category. See if you guys want to go through any one that. Uh, is worth going through, and we can talk about game of the year depending. Okay, so do you guys have it on your side? Do you want to just want me to rattle off some? Uh, the game of the year, you guys want to do any yeah. of the other categories before we get there? That was my question. Um, no, just a shout out to um, best mobile game, Pokemon Unite is. <laughs> Pokemon Unite. It's uh, nominated for that one. Um, <laughs> but it's always Genshin Impact, so. Wait. Um, uh, but yeah, I don't think any of the other categories can talk to me. Mm -hmm. I want to know what the best like, score in music is, personally. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, we can do that. Just before we do that, um, shout out to Best Fam. Shout out to Nintendo for taking Best oh. Family game. Oh, right. <laughs> That's kind of the category. Of category. <laughs> Everybody else stay away. That's kind of lazy, dude, on their part. Anyways, yeah, um, <laughs> whatever. It is what it is. 
I remember they put Paper Mario last year in that category. Like, give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's an action adventure game. What do you mean? Or RPG? Yeah. Or RPG. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, Mario Family. Anyways, uh, best score in music. <laughs> okay. Best score in music. We have the artful the artful escape, Cyberpunk 2077, Deathloop, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, and Near Replicant. Okay, hmm. so for this one, I so think Nier is going to take it. Huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, you think I so? I think Nier is going to take it, but the Awful Escape might be a surprise. Because, uh, mm -hmm. again, from, I think uh, the Awful Escape is a game based on like, uh, music, uh, and a lot of people have praised the the uh, the music in that game. So, so it, might, it might be a I think it's between those two. Cool. Cyberpunk has some bangers, bro. Like, I still play some of those songs to this day. To this day! <laughs> and, I don't even, I, and I usually don't even like that kind of music. That's how good it is. But I would, I would say... I, I'm going to say Art, The Artful Escape, because I feel like Near Replicant... I feel like people weren't talking about it as much as Nier Automata when it won the best score last year, or whenever it was, 2017. True. Yeah, I think you might be right. Okay. Uh, Jose, any opinions on this one? Um, no, I, I agree with you guys. Um, I feel like the art for Escape um, might take that one. Um, sure. Just because, how Luis said, um, that seems to be the main focus <laughs> in that game. Um, yeah. So, it's kind of a, well, it's not a given, but it's a strong contender. Cool. So, no other categories? We're already at 12. Just check in with y'all. Game of the year. Yeah. It's time for game of the year. I can get to the freaking categories. <laughs> Start voting. View all categories. I had it. Have you, have you voted? By the way, I haven't. I'm okay, thinking so... of voting and then just keeping track of my picks and see how many I land on the actual award. Ooh, that's a good idea. All right, so into game of the year. You guys cool with that? Yeah. All right. So game of the year, we have the following games. We have Death Loop, It Takes Two, Metroid Dread, Psychonauts Two, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, and Resident Evil Village. It's Village. Village. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, were you were you surprised Village this year? Yeah, I was really surprised. Like why? I didn't think it was gonna make it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought Monster Hunter stories, uh, not stories, uh, Monster Hunter oh, Rise. Rise, yeah, Rise, man. Could have been a good pick. Oh well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, I don't think Village is gonna win. And... No, I don't think so either. I don't think it takes two is gonna win. Uh I think it might has I think it has a chance. Really? Yeah, legit. It's it came out in the beginning of the year, so the the discourse may have died down, but I feel like the people's love for that game just universally is really high. That is true. How about Metroid Dread? Uh, I don't yeah. think, I don't think Metroid Dread has every, th everything a game of the year should have, barely. I think it's, it's missing either like a narrative or just something a little bit more cinematic. I mean, it's really smooth and it's really well presented, but there's something missing to make it a game of the year thing. Oh yeah, for sure. Metroid Dread should be considered as a 
as a choice, like a, a legit, like, um, yeah, makes sense it gets game of the year, personally, and that's coming from me, I feel like it's just missing a little something, personally. Yeah, I think, as you know, as much as I would like Dread to win, mm-hmm. uh, I don't think it's going to take it. Yeah. And it's going to be one of the, for me, it's, it's either Dead Loop, uh, Ratchet and Clank, or Psychonauts. I think it's between It Takes Two and Psychonauts Two. Ooh. So, um, like, who do you think? Who's your number one pick? Who's gonna take it? Uh, I think Psychonauts Two is going to take it. And if, Ooh. yeah, I really do. Yeah, I'm just gonna stick with that. I I think it's Psychonauts Two time. All right, guys, so Deathloop, it takes two, and Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, have an 88% for Metacritic. Okay. And then Second Out 2 has an 89. True. So, like, they're all, like, right there. Um, you say Psych- Psychonauts 2, right? I say Psychonauts 2, yes. But Ooh. it takes two, man. I mean, I feel like it takes two. It's like it's like the like the underdog here, in my opinion. Mm. Um. But. And I mean, I'm I'm always rooting for underdogs. So. Yeah. But for yeah, for me, it's between. It takes two or death two. Okay. And I, I think I pick it takes two. I, I'm rooting for it takes two. I hope it takes two wins. I think. I think Psychonauts two might take it. Mm. Uh, or should take it. Yeah, I think it should take it. I don't think it's going to win. I think it's uh, either Deadloop or Ratchet and Clank is going to win. Ratchet and Clank. I feel like... I feel like it's it just was... It didn't reach a, 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 like the game of the year peak from the, from the reviews and how people were talking about it. They said, oh yeah, it's great, but it's not masterful. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Is Psychonauts uh, an exclusive? No, it's on other platforms. Yeah, no. yeah it, it's it's not. Because I'm reading some of those reviews and the praise. <laughs> right? The praise for Psychonauts 2 is, is crazy right. out the... Yeah. It makes you, it makes you want to play the games, you know, and be like, whoa, is this game really as good as they say? Um, yeah. But, but yeah, I don't know. But I guess my my hope is that it takes two takes it just because I don't know. I see it as like the underdog. I see it as like a oh this this game uh, for video or the video uh, game of the year. <laughs> um, yeah. So I don't know. And, and I I want to hear that guy's speech if he wins too. All right. <laughs> Joseph Ferris. F the Oscars guy? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Luigi's saying... I don't think you had a definitive one, huh? No, I think... Oh, it's hard. Okay, um, I think I'm going to go with my heart. <laughs> okay. Um, I think Psychonauts too is going to be. Okay, okay. So you're, you're agreeing with me. Mm-hmm. Cool. And Jose is, is is hoping, wishing for it takes two. It takes two, yes. All right. What a, do you think we're underestimating Deathloop? And see, that's the thing. Um, I'm, I'm saying, I think it's between it takes two or Deathloop. Um, mm. But I don't know. 
I feel like because I feel like Death Loop. Like I, I think it, it kind of became like a meme, just like how many trailers they were releasing. And it's like, and I guess that was starting to like change the perception. I, I saw like some people being like, okay, they're trying too hard to to sell this game to us. You know, it might not be, you know, that great or whatever. Um, but uh, apparently it is. So I think it's it's that, like they talk the talk and walk the walk type mm-hmm. of thing, where it's like, oh, okay, so. Yeah, they like oh, so that's why they were releasing all these trailers. Like they knew what they were selling to us. They knew what they were gonna bring. So, um, I think that could factor into like the end result. So I mean, I I feel like it's between those three. If if I had to pick um the top three, it would be Deathloop, It Takes Two, and Psychonauts Two. But I'm still rooting for It Takes Two. I see. I think I just didn't consider Deathloop because people weren't too jazzed about how it ends. From what I heard. So. Interesting. It's not a universal play. It's like a Psychonauts 2. It's like, oh yeah, everything in this game is good. Play it. Right. It takes two. Everything in this game is good. Or I don't know if everything is good, but people would... The story might be a little cringy for some people. I don't know, but <laughs> but people right. don't really seem to mind it. Okay, I think that's gonna do it for our discussions here, boys. You guys ready to end the podcast so you can go eat some? <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah, I think it's time. <laughs> sure. All right. Well, we have been Roll Jump Media. Um, we do this podcast. We aim to do it every Saturday. Uh, we also do uh, reactions. We uh, post on YouTube as well. And we also have some social media. So if you uh, look us up, Roll Jump Media, and uh, give us a follow, join our community by subscribing or whatever. However you want to interact with us, we'd really appreciate that. Uh, thank you very much for watching. And before we sign off, do my co hosts have anything to say to our audience? Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Uh, Thanks for listening, um, and see you next time. Play games. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you on the next one.